Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to the Soldier and Me podcast. I'm your host, Tania Michelle, and let's get into episode five of The Soldier in Me. Today's episode is talking about overcoming friendship and relationship hurt, which I know is relevant to so many people because we all deal with pain from other people or just pain from losing people, whether it's death or just having to separate yourself from someone that you once loved, cared about, or building a tighter boundary where the relationship is just not the same. So we're gonna talk all about it, but first we need to do a little recap. If you're a new listener, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are a new viewer and you watch on my YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching and tuning in again. I love having open conversations just about life and helping people to overcome certain situations that pretty much we all go through. One thing that I've been learning in adulthood is that we're more similar than we are apart. And it's really not that hard to navigate healthy friendships. It's really not that hard to navigate relationships that are healthy. It's just the fact that we all have our own hurts and our own, like our own perspectives that I believe tears friendships and relationships apart the most. And that's why you always hear that communication is the most important thing when it comes to relationships. Well, before we get into the topic, we're going to actually go back a little bit, recap on my life. So if you're new here, just want to let, give you a little, uh, give you a chance to get to know me. Okay. So I'm a wife. I just got married back in December to my amazing husband and my Cassius Davis. Everybody calls him cash. And the cool thing about being married is that you have a built in best friend. Like we do everything together. We are attached at the hip and he is just everything to me and more. My better half, literally my better half because your girl Tania is a hot mess, but Cash is more poised. He's calm. He's cool. He's collected. And I love that about him. We just celebrated his birthday this past week and it was awesome. I bought him a PlayStation 5. He's been on the game every single day with his friends and we worked on painting our benches and our kitchen tables. So if you're new here, we have a house and we've been trying to make our house into a home and it has been such an amazing journey so the hubby painted if you're watching on youtube this bench behind me we have a long bench that goes all the way across plus the table he repainted and it looks amazing you can check out the vlog on our channel topic twins youtube channel if you want to get more in depth into our life and like kind of our day-to-day because he's an engineer i'm a meteorologist we're working professionals but we also have creative sides to us where he is more hands-on has a detailing business where i I love content, creating videos, and really just inspiring and motivating other people. But I say this all to say is that even though we're so great and we're so great together, we still have our flaws, not just within our relationship, but when it comes to building relationships outside of our relationship. So um, a couple of times, really within this past year and a half, I've had to separate myself from people, which is okay. It's just that it can be really emotional of a process when it comes to you having to have someone close to you and then no longer having their presence there anymore. I'm super grateful for my sisters because they have been just my backbone through every single season of my life. They love cash. We all get along. And the one thing about having sisters or siblings in general, brothers and sisters, is that I hate when I see them arguing or when I see siblings not getting along because you don't realize that your siblings are gonna be your lifelong best friends, hopefully. Even siblings have their rivalries and their issues sometimes, but I do really cherish those bloodline relationships. My siblings, my sisters, Cash's siblings, we just have a good time when we're in person and when we're together. So those are the relationships that I believe you should never let fall apart. Communicate, communicate, communicate. So let's talk a little bit about my relationship hurt. I have my notes. So if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening, uh, I always create an outline for my episodes because I'm a rambler and I like to go from point A to point B in a straight line. So if y'all want me in a straight line, we got to have the notes. (laughs) Okay. So when it comes to overcoming friendship and relationship hurt, I think it first starts off with you recognizing what you value in relationships. And I've had to learn this the hard way because what I value in relationships, other people don't. And that's okay. I am such a cool person. Like, not trying to say cool as in like, yo, with the sunglasses. Hey, no, not like that. I mean that I'm not really uptight when it comes to 
my friendships. I just like things to be more neutral. I like to be able to hang out with you and enjoy the time and to laugh and just to like feel joyful and giddy, you know? Where some people need that friend where they're wishing them happy birthday on the day of, where they're, you know, showing up to every single event in their life or they're just super present in the, the knit and gritty of what they're going through in their life. And I've just learned that I'm not that person. And so I've had so many relationships fail because I forget their birthdays. Shoot, I barely remember my mama and my daddy's birthday, which is so bad, but I'm just one of those per people where I like to be more in person. And so if you're not in my life in person, that it's really hard for me to, you know, it's really hard for me to show up over the phone, like remembering to wish you have a birthday. And Cash is the same way. Like we're not the texters. I'm the person where I'd rather talk to you and call you on the phone because that's how I have conversations. That's how I communicate because I like to talk and texting doesn't allow me to be myself. Okay. Texting is too short. Now certain things. Yes. Texting's great. Okay. See, I'm getting off track, but what I'm just trying to say is the first step is recognizing what you like in relationships. And so I'm just giving you an example of how I am when it comes to relationships. My best friends are the people that I don't talk to every day. I have these two girls that came to my wedding too. Uh, Emily and Lexi, shout out to y'all. We are we are different in so many ways, but so alike in so many ways as well to where we can just get together, have a good time, have deep conversations and meaningful conversations. But when we're not in person, oh honey, we live in our own lives, which is so cool because we get to come together and kind of talk about all the things that we've missed out on. So when we come together, it's like, oh my gosh, what? Like, girl, you have a man? Like what? And so I love relationships like that. But there have been relationships where people have expected so much of me where I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. What is happening here? Because I can't show up in certain ways. I'll miss Lexi and Emily's birthday and they probably wouldn't care as much because they know that my true posture is that I'm going to show up if they needed me. If they needed to talk about something or anything like that, I'm there. And when I realized that when it came to relationships and friendships in my life, really quickly, I, I've had people fall off because of what they valued in friendships, we didn't set that boundary from the jump. And because I wasn't there in certain ways that they just did not work out. I have a really close knit family. So when it comes to me, like having graduations or birthday parties, I'm okay if I'm just spending it with my mom, my dad, and my siblings. Whereas I have some friends who need their friends to celebrate those milestones with them. And so when you realize like what your friends need, I think you can show up better for them and maybe be, maybe prevent yourself from having the, that friendship and relationship hurt. And when I'm talking friendships, this can be significant others too, people that you're dating. You have to realize what a friendship means to them so that you can serve them in that way. And I failed at this. I'm getting better at this, but you live, you learn and you grow. And so you have to give yourself grace and, you know, show up in a better way the next time, because there's a billion people in this world and you know, you can meet someone else down the line and become best friends with them in a matter of seconds and not necessarily seconds. Cause I do think it takes time to build those really, really meaningful relationships. But I do think the older that you get, the harder it is to have these friendships is because everyone has their own lives and everyone has their own like friendship trauma and relationship trauma. And so you're like trying to dig through the dirt of everyone's past while building this healthy relationship, which makes it so much more difficult. I often look back at being a kid and I'm like, man, I've had friends as a kid when in my childhood where once we move, we stop talking, but I just have those good memories of when we were in person, we would come outside and play all the time. And another background from my life is that I'm a military baby. So I'm one of those people where once I moved, not that the friendship is over, but we're just probably not gonna talk because I've just been like that my entire life. I'm so used to starting fresh and starting new. And maybe that's where you are when it comes to your friendships. So you might have to do work a little harder on maintaining friendships once you move away from them or scheduling those trips and vacations to hang out with these distance friends so that you can keep that bond. But I do want to talk about overcoming the friendship and relationship hurt. Number one, you have to understand the pain. You need to understand what in particular is making that friendship or relationship more painful for you. Is it an emotional investment that's been broken? Do you have emotional ties to someone that once they're gone, now you feel emotionally empty? 
Trust and vulnerability, has that been broken? Or has there been an impact on your self-esteem and your mental health? There's another thing that comes with friendships and relationships where, you know, we're all human. So jealousy is something that you, not necessarily, jealousy is something that we all are gonna experience some at some point or period in our life, right? Whether it's just from what you see on social media or whether it's someone in your close life that, you know, might be doing better than you. And I just gonna tell you guys straight up, I'm human. I've been jealous before, been jealous of my siblings before, been jealous of my friends before, but that's where our Christian roots need to come in. And we need to remind ourselves that we do not need to be jealous of someone else because their blessings do not affect the blessings that God has for you. And when you realize that you realize there's no need to be jealous and jealousy can start to impact your self-esteem when you think that you're not good enough or that your friend is better than you in some shape form or capacity and that's never really that doesn't have to be the case and being jealous affects not only your self-esteem but it affects your mental health because you start overthinking things and thinking that you're less than and you're not I guarantee you, you are not. And when it comes to friendships, the one thing that I have learned to set a boundary in my own friendships is to not get as vulnerable as I once were, I once had been. Because the one thing about being married and one thing that I've learned is that my husband is my best friend, so we can be as vulnerable with each other as we want. But when it comes to outside people, like they don't need to know every single thing just because they're your friend. And even if they ask, it's okay to just say, hey, you know what? I don't wanna talk too much about that because that emotional investment is not something that I wanna have with you. <laughs> and that is okay. Uh, it's really easy to get emotionally invested in your friendships. And I've had friends that, to be honest, my friends, I know more about all of my friends than they probably ever will about me, which is so crazy. But it's just one of those things that has been built in with into me as a military child where my parents were really, they weren't as emotional with me and my siblings because they are just so much more cool, calm, and collected, you know? They try to tell us that things are not as big as they seem in our heads. So from learning that, I've just never really had to spill out emotionally to my friends when it came to other relationships or things that was happening in my life. Now, they do know stuff, don't get me wrong. Like I have opened up, I've been vulnerable, but to an extent, they tell me a lot more of their deep, darkest secrets than they probably will ever know from my life which is pretty interesting, but I've just never, I like to talk more about the things that are happening in my current life instead of like going deep down into my therapy and like going back into my past hurts and traumas because really they ain't a lot of hurt and trauma in my life where I've had some friends where they have so much hurt and so much trauma where I'm constantly like unpacking them and it gets draining. So you have to make sure that your emotional investment within those friendships, those relationships too are healthy so that when you have friendship hurt you don't you don't feel that emotional void like man this person knows everything about me and i'll never talk to them again and that's happened to me too but you know you just gotta you just gotta move on <laughs> we're gonna talk about how to in just a bit but the other thing is not just understanding the pain, but navigating the healing process. The healing process is probably one of the hardest parts, but I have found some tips on ways you can heal. And number one is the importance of acknowledging and validating feelings, whether they're your own feelings or the others. And then differentiating the types of hurt, betrayal, drifting apart, misunderstanding, a lot of friendships and relationships to me fall apart from a simple misunderstanding because people don't want to communicate. People don't want to pick up the phone and talk. You know, I just feel like we have so many other voices in our head and other people in our life where they might not like a person, blah, 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 blase, blase, that ruins us from maintaining or reevaluating the friends and the friendships that we already have. Because other people might be like, that person ain't no good for you. You need to let them go. And then you let them go and it's just like, we're all dealing with stuff. We all have problems. We all have issues. We all, have, we all make mistakes. So why are we so quick to cancel people in our lives? And I think that our new generation is, if this person isn't serving you the way that you want to be served, cancel them, stop talking to them. And I'm always like, why? I love people. I always love people. I love people. And I just think that I'm one of those people, I'm a person that truly, I don't, I don't really cut people off. People cut me off. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't cut people off. I really do think that people cut me off and they think they're doing themselves a service, which, hey, by all means, do yourself a service, boo. If people are cutting you off in your life, let them. Bye. So I have some tips for you to overcome friendship and relationship hurt. Number one, you got to allow yourself to grieve. You know, whether that's crying, whether that's talking that out. And the grieving process can be a long and drawn out process, but I promise you, you'll get over it. I've had situationships in the past that I felt just tore me apart. I think my biggest relationship hurt was from a past situationship where I thought this person was my forever person. Thankfully, this person and I have, you know, we gnashed things out. We had a conversation. We talked about it. We are good. And we still support each other on the social media aspect. But God separated me from them so that I could have my now. And when you start to realize that, that God separates you from things then so that you can have your now, you'd be like, okay, God, I see what you were doing. You were really stepping it up. Uh, and I think it's important not to rush through emotions. It might take you a year, it might take you two years before you can actually have a decent conversation with the person that once hurt you, and that's fine too. And then there are several activities that you can do with grieving, from journaling to talking to a trusted friend. I do not advise. <laughs> Unless you have a real trusted friend that you, that you can trust because Listen, I can talk to Cash about things. I can talk to my siblings about things. But other than that, I don't have trusted friends where I'm going to grieve with. Or therapy. Therapy can be your trusted friend. That's the way, that way this person is not. They are invested in your emotional needs, but you don't have that outside relationship with your therapist, if that makes sense. To where if you guys separated or whatever, they're doing a job to serve you. It's not going to affect the actual friendship and you know the social circle that you guys have together if that makes any sense i feel like a therapy uh, a therapist and going to therapy is another way to hash out any grieving that you have from a relationship or friendship hurt number two is setting healthy boundaries understand the need for boundaries in healing by doing this when you understand what boundaries that you all need to set so that you can heal better i think that just makes the grieving process a lot better making sure that you distance yourself from them whether that's not being super invested in their life through social media because one thing about social media is that you almost can't escape from anybody anything you can almost find out what people are doing all the time 24 7 and it can easily bring up that stir up that bitterness and that hurt that you once were feeling, which is really difficult sometimes. And I think social media keeps those negative emotions in our lives where if you need to remove this person from your platforms or whatever, then you need to do what you got to do so that you can heal and grieve in the best way possible. Respect your own space, your time, but also respect their space and their time. This is a two way street. Number three. After one, allowing yourself to grieve and setting healthy boundaries. Number three, you want to focus on self-care and personal growth. The best way, in my opinion, to grieve is to figure out what you need to do to grow yourself. You know, reevaluate where you messed up in a situation and fix it. I told you guys, I've messed up so many times because I fall short in showing up for people. I am so invested in my own self growth that that has hindered me in my past friendships and relationships because I can't show up for them. And I'm learning now to set a better boundary between my own self growth and the growth and the support of people around me. Because I have a lot going on in my life, which, hey, quite frankly, we all do. And I just feel like it's important for you to understand that not only do you matter, but if you love your friends and the people in your life, you need to show up for them and let them know that they matter too. One, allow yourself to grieve. Two, set healthy boundaries. But three, focus on your self-care and personal growth. You need to figure out where you can improve physically, emotionally, and mentally so that you can be your better self. And when you're your better self, you can actually show up better for those friends and the people that matter you, to you in your life. Engage in activities that bring you joy and fulfillment. Me, I love to work out. Y'all see my muscles? They growing and I can do push-ups like boom, boom, boom. So I'm joining the military. I, I'm gonna be in the Navy Reserves and that has just been one thing that has been bringing me so much joy is watching the growth process from me from now to growing into the soldier that I am going to actually be and just seeing how strong I'm becoming in the process. And all of that has brought me so much joy and fulfillment, those kind of things. Also my podcast, my YouTube channel, creating content has just been one thing that has always brought me joy and fulfillment. And number three, personal growth and new hobbies or interests. That kind of ties into what brings you joy and fulfillment. Maybe you need to explore 
what new things you like to do, whether that's bike riding, going for a run. I've been running a lot lately, not only just because in the military they do um, those eight mile rucks, I believe. They, they run a lot, period, from PT to the rucks, all of that kind of stuff. Running has just been a peace of mind for me. In a time where I'm just closest to God, I'd be praying and running, y'all, because I'd be hurting. Praying and running because I'd be hurting. <laughs> and so finding those new hobbies can just ignite new joy in you and help you to, over time, get over the grief that you're feeling from relationship or friendship hurt. And number four is to seek support and professional help if needed. If you need a therapist, by all means, baby, I'm not knocking therapy. People might need that. For me, I don't need therapy. I'm not trying to say that I won't ever need it, but as of right now, I, I therapy is not my thing because I'm not the type of person that just wants to sit there and talk about my feelings and like deep dive into that. No, I'm going to talk about them, cry over them myself, pray about it and move on. You know, life goes on. And I just think that if therapy is what you need, please go for it. But maybe you just need support systems. Maybe you just need your friends, your family, a supportive group of people to help ignite and to help strengthen you in a time when you just feel like more emotional, that emotional distraught. There are tons of benefits for seeking professional help. Counseling and therapy are super uh, helpful tools to use, especially when it comes to relationship, like um, your more romantic relationships, you know, marriages and, you know, dating relationships. If, if this is something that you really want to work on, counseling and therapy might just be what you guys need to really navigate the deep conversations that otherwise you may not have been able to navigate. And you want to just find the right support for your needs. That's the number one. What do you need? Think about that. And now you got to move forward because you can't do all that and stand, stand stagnant. Like you can't do all that and stand stagnant. No, we're not doing that. Uh, uh. You need to embrace forgiveness and let go because there are billions of people in this world and so many people you haven't met, so many amazing people. And sometimes people are just in your life for a season. When I think about being a military kid, you learn real quick about seasons because people are only gonna be in your life for them three, maybe two to three years while they're stationed there and you might not ever hear from them again. And back in the day, there wasn't really any social media that we could keep in touch with people. So there are so many people that I've met in my past that I'm like, wow, like I wonder how they're doing and I wish them well but I've had to let go. And I think that's why I'm so, I'm a lot better at letting go because of the fact that I've had to let go so many times from moving from place to place growing up. Um, embracing forgiveness and letting go is all that God wants us to do in our life. You know, at the end of the day, the day got to end. I love that quote and I don't know where I heard it from, but at the end of the day, the day got to end. So you've got to embrace forgiveness and let go because that's exactly what God envisions for us as Christians. As we walk in our Christ walk, as we live the Christian lifestyle and aim to be more like Christ, he wants us to forgive people, let go. You know, don't hold bitterness in your heart. And also don't be bitter from your past mistakes. We mess up in friendships and relationships and that's okay. You know, you may have messed up, but that doesn't mean you're a bad person. You might be the villain in their story, but there are so many other people's stories that you can be the hero in. Oh, I need to say that again. Cause that is just the truth. You're going to be a villain in somebody's story at some point or another, some form or fashion, but you can be the hero in someone else's story. So don't let one story, you paying a bad character in one story, make you a bad character in every one story because that does not have to be the case. So you need to distinguish between forgiving and forgetting because you need to forgive first and then let go. Number two, you need to release resentment and anger for your own peace. You need to rebuild trust in future friendships and relationships. Don't let your past trauma, past hurts and friendships and relationships affect you moving forward and all the great that can come in the future from new people that you meet throughout your life. Take lessons, learn and apply them positively and be open to new connections. Don't close yourself off. One thing about me is Cash, he can just be with me and have his family and be set. But I love having friends. I really, really do. I love to laugh. I love to smile. I love to make other people laugh. I love to make jokes. And so having friends outside of my relationship just makes life so much more fulfilling. I love to do couple things with other couples. And me and Cash have been more into that a lot more lately. And it's just been a new igniting fire and building us together and seeing love from other people and how they love each other. Mm, God is so good. But that is it for this episode. I just want you all to realize that no matter where you're at in your life, 
no matter what you have done in your past, you still have a future, you still have a present. So you gotta forgive, let go, move on. And once again, at the end of the day, the day gotta end. And we have one main goal as Christians is to make it into heaven. So don't allow your past hurts, traumas from people, from what people have done to you or what you have done to other people, stop you from becoming the best person that God wants you to be. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my podcast so you can be notified every time we post a new episode. We are already in episode five, so we are a month into this podcast journey. We post every Monday at 12 o'clock. So get with it, set your alarms every Monday at 12 p.m. right around lunchtime. It can be your Monday lunchtime lifter. But I really do hope The Soldier in Me brings out The Soldier in You. Thank you so much for watching The Soldier in Me podcast. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, y'all see my hair. My hairstylist is my new friend and I love her so much cause she kills my styles. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Tania Michelle, and I'll see you next week in the Soldier and Me podcast. Love you guys. Bye.